time moves on and time brings changes. It's brought some changes to Beecher's Brook in recent years. Slight modifications to the height of the fence and a significant levelling off of the drop which has been 10, 12 inches steeper in the past. But tinker with it however you like, this is the hinge on which so many Grand Nationals have turned over the years. Catch your mind back to 1977, horse called Andy Pandy. It was Red Rum's third victory, but Andy Pandy was 10 lengths clear and going strongly when he fell out there somewhere. 1979, Alverton, a tremendous horse, fresh from a Gold Cup success. Sadly, he fell fatally on the outside of this fence and the image of John Joe O'Neill cradling his stricken mount lives on to this day. Cash your mind forward, 85 West Hip, banging contention, just about here on the second circuit when he departed. He came back 12 months later and made handsome amends. 1990, Uncle Merlin on fast ground. He and subsequent winner Miska Frisk were bolting along in front when Uncle Merlin jumped too big too bold and parted company with his rider. Clan Royal 2005, who can forget that? He was coming down the outside of this track like a runaway train under A.P. McCoy when he was badly hampered by a loose horse and carried out on the far side of the fence. And three years ago, Dennis O'Regan having a dream ride on Black Appalachie, four or five lengths clear when he overjumped here and parted company with Dennis. Tinker with this fence all you like. It is still a fearsome, fearsome obstacle. Let's hope the recent changes do have the desired effect, but the odds tell us that three or four horses are likely to depart in the Grand National at Beaches. What do you think, guys? Two questions spring to mind here. How important is safety at Beaches in this year's National, and which are the horses with the technique to thrive over this fearsome fence?